Welcome to the review of Sword of Glass. Sword of Glass was published by Keypunch Software in 1986. It utilizes CGA graphics. The game was one of those $10 budget games that came with a pack of four other games. It's a stereotypical dungeon crawl role playing game. It utilizes a text interface for the town where you create characters, visit the local shop, hotel, temple, etc. There are two classes in this game, Magician and Warrior. After purchasing your equipment, you can head out to the beginning of the dungeon. And it has cute little sayings like this one about Toto. There's also sayings about passwords, riddles, etc. You move around the dungeon with the keyboard. The graphics are so cheesy, even for a 1986 game. But what can you expect? It was one out of four games for ten bucks. You can see that there's treasure you can find. There's different graphics like stalagmites. And here's our first enemy. Since we're a magician, we're casting an attack spell. That was kind of nice graphics. The funny thing is the names of the spells. They're not very intuitive. and They almost have a Spanish-like feel to them. Some enemies, such as this one, takes less damage from magic. There's other ways to attack in the game. You can shoot using a bow and arrow. Magician and warriors can do this. Or warriors can attack by simply moving forward and bumping into the enemy. There's also special items you can find in the game. Like here we found a potion but also got poisoned with a trap at the same time. Poison's one of the worst things in this game. You can view the inventory and of course use items such as the potions. Now watch closely as the hit points go down as we walk. You can also poison enemies which is pretty cool. There's other traps such as this, a dust trap which blinds you and then the screen goes blank and you just have to try to make it back toward the stairs or find a way to cure yourself. Now this is what happens when you die. Yep, that's it. You get booted back to the main menu and that's it. There's a hotel in this game where you can rest and regain hit points. That's right, a hotel. Not an inn, a hotel. It's also the place you go to level up. Here you can see we learned a new spell. Salad or Salud. There's also a temple where you can bless items, get revival potions for people who are dead, and get information on items. It's pretty pricey to get information or to repair items. Here we're going to buy a revival potion for Merlin. And then for extra money, they'll actually tell you where the body is. As you can see, items actually deprecate with time and with usage. Here are togas dented, which is pretty strange that a cloth item could be dented, but oh well. Here we're going to find the grave of one of our people who died and we're going to use our revival potion on them. First you have to hunt for a person, then you have to type in the name of the person to revive. You die very frequently in this game, which is why you could potentially have more than one person dead on the same square. Now this is interesting. You can see we revive Marcos and you can actually have two characters moving around at the same time. Here we're going to move Jaxus back up to the main town and then Marcos can follow. It's kind of a way to try to get two players involved but it just doesn't work quite right in a turn based game. There's some other cool features in the game such as the ability to use chalk to make marks on the wall in case you're starting to get lost. And there's also other items such as a map which shows an area of the dungeon from a bird's eye view. One of the strong features in this game is the massive size of the dungeons. There's also these features such as sensing when enemies are to your left or right. There are several levels to the dungeon, so you go deeper by taking these staircases. And it gets more and more dangerous as you go. You can find some pretty scary enemies such as this insubstantial form. Looks like a kind of like an alien to me. It's pretty cool looking. Overall, 
I'd say that Sword of Glass isn't a bad game. If you can ignore the terrible graphics and the horrible plot about rescuing or finding a Sword of Glass and just enjoy it for what it is, you can have some fun with this game. Thanks for watching and see you next time.